okay previous class we understand applicability of accounting standards now next topic is preface to accounting standards preface to accounting standard means generally accounting standards are applicable to all industries are or it is restricted or exempted to some industries means on what basis accounting standards will be applicable industry wise that is called as preface to accounting standards okay so preface to accounting standards once again i am explaining it means accounting standards are applicable to all types of industries uh, or it will be applicable to restricted number of industries only uh, or limited number of industries only so on what basis accounting standards will be applicable is called as preface to accounting standards clear actually this preface to accounting standard word is not important for students important for students is what ki on what basis accounting standards are applicable what guidelines ministry of corporate affairs set while accounting standards are applicable or industries have to apply accounting standard while preparing financial statements clear like in india every person has to pay tax a so is any person whose income is more than the limit prescribed by government that person only liable to pay tax rest of the persons not required to pay any tax so here also for every company or every enterprise accounting standards have to be complied a no this will depends on one criteria what is that criteria commercial parallels commercial parallels means if any organization which is generating the revenue even 1% of revenue is coming from commercial activities and 99% revenue is coming from non commercial activities then accounting standard is applicable for entire undertaking example e limited is the organization e limited 99% activities are non commercial in nature and 1% activity is commercial in nature So 1% activity commercial means even 99% activities are non-commercial. Accounting standards will be applicable or entire entity. It means accounting standards applicability depends on nature of activities. If nature of activities are commercial, then accounting standards are applicable. This is the criteria of applicability of a standard. A standard is not decided on the basis of generally big size industry small size industry or profitable industry non profitable industry charitable non charitable or this is not commercial non commercial activities are the important area of consideration so if activities are non commercial in nature then 100% activities are non commercial in nature then accounting standards not applicable even if 1% activities are commercial then accounting standards applicable for example already i mentioned here a limited 99% activities non commercial but 1% activities are commercial then on entire a limited balance sheet pnl statement all financial data accounting standards have to be applicable means in every area wherever accounting part is there as balance sheet pnl cash flow statement a limited has to use and comply with accounting standards some students think that uh, sir only 1% revenue is coming from commercial na so for that portion only accounting standard should be applicable remaining 99% not applicable means not correct even if 1% revenue coming from commercial 99% not coming from commercial accounting standards will be applicable on 100% accounting data this is the methodology of applicability of standards understand suppose if one organization is there 100% activities are non commercial means charitable type no commercial nothing commercialized this suppose one orphanage is there one trust is there one foundation is there so 100% activities are non commercial so in that accounting standards are not applicable okay example nowadays people are generally having the access with 
different different types of trusts and foundations so one of the foundation is also there in tamil nadu isha foundation clear so isha foundation previously only they are in non commercial activities means the person who run the isha foundation that person is providing some spiritual knowledge to everybody not only from one particular religion everybody and some health related tips and also how to live in a society in this area also he will conduct the workshop so his income totally whatever is coming revenue and whatever different types of incomes he generated that is non commercial activity but in recent years they decided to sell different types of books products on means e commerce platform amazon flipkart now because of this commercialization attract now our entire isha foundation financial statements if they prepare accounting standards will be applicable this is the criteria ah suppose if isha foundation is exempted in income tax law there is no need to pay any taxes then generally it is not mandatory for them if tax matters are involved it is mandatory for them clear but when they prepare the financial statement even 1% activities are commercial means on entire organization accounting standards have to be applied clear this is the criteria of applicability of standards the standards not depend on small size big size standards depends on nature of activities i hope now you understand now organization will prepare two types of financial statements one is general purpose financial statement another is special purpose financial statement general purpose financial statement means it is accessible to every person means it can be accessed by any person like shareholder debenture holder creditor banks government employees it is available on the website of the company anybody can have the access it is generally circulated in the public also if there is a requirement but compulsory it will be circulated to shareholders mostly whenever annual general meeting is held every shareholder will get the annual report so in that annual report financial statements part of annual report so this type of financial statements are called as general purpose financial statement so in general purpose financial statement we have balance sheet statement of pnl cash flow statement statement of changes in equity okay and consolidated financial statements it is called as what general purpose financial statements so general purpose financial statement means generally anybody can have the access on that and it can be useful to almost all all types of users there are two types of users of financial statements okay external also internal also so general purpose financial statements will be useful for both but some of the financial statements are not useful for everyone it is limited in use it is generally used for management purpose or it is used for some specific purpose only so those types of financial statements are called as specific purpose financial statement special purpose financial statement okay so accounting standards are applicable on general purpose financial statements not on special purpose financial statement so in special purpose financial statements what items are covered director report minutes of annual general meeting prospects of the company clear and whenever some special audits are conducted for that purpose you are preparing any statements so those are called as special purpose financial statements so on that you have no mandatory provisions regarding applicability of standards but general purpose financial statement whenever company prepares there is mandatory obligation on the company to comply with accounting standards clear na so in this topic these are the aspects what i have discussed so far see here accounting standards are applicable for general purpose financial statements and 
other financial reporting which are subject to attestation function by ICA member. So it is applicable to all entities irrespective of form, activities, orientation. Means it can be applicable to companies also, cooperative societies also, partnership firm also. It can be applicable for commercial, industrial, business. It can be applicable for profit oriented also, charitable also, religious purpose, organizations also. Okay. But the important point here is if any entity whose activities are 100% not related to commercial, industrial or business, then no need to comply with accounting standards. 100% activities should be non-commercial in nature. Even if 1% of the revenue is coming from commercial and 99% is non-commercial, in that circumstance also, on entire organization, accounting standard will be applicable. Clear? Now, general purpose financial statement means already I explained. These financial statements will be useful for both external and internal users. This include balance sheet, profit and loss, cash flow, changes in equity, notes, etc. Clear? So, 1% revenue is coming from commercial, remaining is not coming from non commercial, means accounting standard applicable. 100% not related to commercial means no need to comply with accounting standards. Now suppose one student will have the doubts are religious, charitable organizations also comply with the standard? Yes. If this is there, like already I given the Isha Foundation example, now they are selling some books, uh, products on website, so commercial ho gaya ho. They are earning some profits also. Clear? Patanjali. Previously, Patanjali is famous for what? Yoga. Clear? But right now, Patanjali is totally commercial. Totally commercial. Mr. Ramdev Baba previously, what he said? He don't eat Maggie noodles. Now, Patanjali noodles are coming in the market. Clear? So, commercial. So, according to standard, applicable. Patanjali company share is listed in NSC also, BSC also. NSC, BSC, it is listed to commercial. Accounting standard applicable. Because listed company means big company, India is applicable. India is applicable. Clear? Next, uh, some other important points. Means whenever there is a matter of dispute, means accounting standard and law sometimes dispute will arise so accounting standard should not override the provisions of law accounting standard should not override the provisions of law always accounting standards will be drafted and prepared by keeping all the provisions of law by maintaining all the provisions of law without disturbing that in some places if disturbance arising so act will generally overriding effect on accounting standards in the matter of disclosure in the matter of disclosure ah, in some places suppose any treatment is there so in those treatment areas if act is silent then accounting standard will override if act is silent but accounting standard should not override the provisions of law clear Example, what is this exactly sir, we have not understand. Example, suppose if you study accounting standard 13, this standard is related to accounting for investment. This standard is related to accounting for investment. Okay. So, in this standard, investments are classified into two types. Investments are classified into two types. Okay. And in companies at balance sheet also, investments are classified into two types. So, companies at balance sheet also, there are two types of investment. In accounting standard 13 also, there are two types of investments. So, in companies at balance sheet, investment is non current and current. These are two types of investment. In balance sheet of company, non-current investments 
on current investment this is the heading they mentioned and in accounting standard 13 investments are long term and current or short term so we cannot use long term investment word in balance sheet format we have to use non current investment only so it means accounting standard cannot override the provisions of law accounting standard is saying ki long term investment short current investment but companies act format is saying non current investment current investment so which we have to use law in law format is there so in format what is mentioned non current what is mentioned so ultimately we have to stick with that so we have to use non current word only long term word we cannot use in balance sheet if you write long term investment there is a violation of law because clearly they mentioned in the preface key accounting standard cannot override the provisions of law this is one of the example clear next in previous class already i explained ki whenever accounting standards are drafted and prepare first uh, objective decided then scope decided then different types of definitions then recognition criteria then presentation and disclosure and some times measurement is also required so this is also part of your preface sometimes some changes will take place some amendments will take place like law so whenever amendments or changes are taking place the effect will be retrospective effect or effect will be prospective effect generally in accounting standards effect will be prospective only not retrospective the reason is retrospective effects will disturb the previous year's financial statements also retrospective means what prospective means what you have to understand properly okay retrospective means what prospective means what you have to understand properly retrospective means suppose a limited preparing the financial statement so it is it is it has already prepared financial statement for 2019 2020 2021 2022 okay for this years they have prepared the financial statements now one amendment has been made in the accounting standard so because of this amendment the changes have to be incorporated from 2022 onwards or in previous years also suppose in 2022 amendment has taken place so from 2022 itself the changes have to be taken place or in earlier years also we have to make the changes so accounting standard preface is saying ki whenever changes are taking place in which year changes have done or changes have made from that year only changes have to be incorporated earlier years there is no need to make any changes so this is called as what prospective effect this is called as what prospective effect suppose if earlier year figures also we have to change then it is called as retrospective effect and it is called as what retrospective so in accounting standards mostly or in maximum cases i can say the effect is prospective because in preface they clearly mention ki effect must be prospective okay <coughs> so this is you are all about preface to accounting standard clear if any doubt is there you can ask the question here so previously in examination questions also tested if you see what are the issues with which accounting standards deals so you have to write the answer this preface clear because you don't understand the question if this type of question is tested clear so this question answer is what you have to write the preface what you have to write preface where it is applicable on what basis applicable it is applicable on general purpose or special purpose or clear and what items are covered all this you have to mention here okay next criteria of accounting standard means already we understand 
कि लेवल वन एंटरप्राइज एंड नॉन एस एम सी ऑल अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड अप्लीकेबल लेवल टू लेवल थ्री एंड एस एम सी सम ऑफ द अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स आर एग्जामेड लाइक एस थ्री सेवनटीन ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी सेवन एग्जामेड एंड इन सम केसेस सम पैराग्राफ्स ऑल्सो एग्जामेड लाइक फॉर एस एम सी एस फिफ्टीन ए and as 19 also some of the paragraphs are exempted in level 2 level 3 generally similar points are there along with as 24 also covered in that clear so in this question number 2 also have to write this answer list the criteria to be applied for rating enterprises level 1 enterprise so five conditions are given la that you have to mention here okay so preface to accounting standard i hope it is clearly understand now next is framework of financial statements framework of financial statements framework for financial statement means what framework for financial statement means ultimately financial statements will have how many items financial statements will have income expenses asset liability clear means balance sheet pnl financial statement means balance sheet pnl balance sheet asset liability equity three items important to understand asset liability equity clear and pnl expenses incomes between this only all accounting standards are drafted here in this areas only generally accounting standard will guide you because when standard view learn where it is applicable either pnl or balance sheet either pnl or balance sheet so balance sheet means asset liability or equity pnl means expense or income that's why we have to understand the this five terms perfectly asset liability equity income expense so previously in what way you understand asset liability income expense equity that is not again repeated here here terminology is different here advanced terminology is used sophisticated terminology is used okay previously what you learned that is correct but that will not match here like asset means students will simply say property asset means what property here definition is very vast <laughs> explanation is very vast okay so we have to understand all these points here so first uh, already i explained ki there are two types of financial statement one is general purpose one is what in general purpose balance sheet statement of pnl cash flow notes etc will come and statement uh, special purpose financial statements different so in that director report statements by chairman management and all this is not part of financial statement this is not part of the financial statement this items only include uh, if a company is preparing consolidated balance sheet also consolidated balance sheet also part of this okay like holding subsidiary relationships are there so consolidated financial statement is also part of financial statement if there is no holding subsidiary relationship this will be part of financial statements okay so examination mcq they can test this by financial statement includes what so these three items will not part of financial statements remember this one is board of director report management analysis chairman statement these are only used for higher authorities this is not useful for public or shareholders this is used for top authorities only okay next what is notes to accounts this also we have to understand notes to accounts means generally in balance sheet each and everything we cannot show on the face of balance sheet on the face of balance sheet each and everything we cannot understand 
clear so some of the only main main items are disclosed on the face of balance sheet remaining details are mentioned in notes clear example in balance sheet only property plant equipment will be mentioned but in property plant equipment we have different items like plant and machinery fixture fitting clear office equipment clear different different items na so everything we cannot disclose on the face of balance sheet so this will be disclosed in what notes clear notes to accounts that is called as what notes to accounts so notes to accounts means in first year foundation level what financial accounting you learn that is proprietary concern financial statement so in that notes not required in that because size of the organization is very small na so directly will write plant machinery directly will write fixtures and fitting directly will write equipment etc but here company business is very vast expanded business when company balance sheet we have to disclose so much of stuff what is opening balance of assets how many additions have taken place <coughs> then what is depreciation clear then depreciation of current year how much earlier year how much any asset which has been impaired that also separately mentioned then net amount will be in order column so all this we cannot disclose in balance sheet because in one company sometime 10 types of tangible assets will be there so balance sheet will have limited space clear understand that's why only on the face of balance sheet main main items are disclosed and in that whatever items will come that will be shown in notes to accounts that will be shown in notes to accounts clear next whenever financial statements are prepared before preparing the financial statements certain fundamental accounting assumptions have to be complied with that fundamental accounting assumption means whenever you study the financial statement you have to assume ki financial statements are prepared on the basis of this so this is underlying assumption this is a underlying assumption clear suppose in telangana suppose you are making the friendship with one person so first what is your assumption ki this person is from telangana ya pehle usko samajh lete ka uttar pradesh madhya pradesh ka bol kar after discussing something you generally understand ki this person is from telangana or other states but first underlying assumption is what telangana similarly when you study the financial state friends that an underlying assumptions are there what are those underlying assumptions clear so there are three fundamental assumptions here okay first assumption is going concern first assumption is going concern second assumption is consistency third assumption is accrual it means financial statement whenever we study or analyze the financial statement we have to assume ki it is prepared on the basis of accrual don't assume ki it is prepared on the basis of cash if it is prepared on the basis of cash the fact has to be disclosed if no fact is disclosed we have to assume what the financial statements are prepared on accrual financial statements are prepared on accrual this is the underlying assumption this is called as what fundamental accounting assumptions fundamental accounting assumption suppose i am analyzing the financial statements of one company so i have to assume ki this financial statements are prepared on the basis of accrual only clear i will not assume ki this is prepared on cash so first assumption is what the financial statement which i am analyzing is prepared on the basis of accrual if it is prepared on cash basis means fact should be disclosed first uh, 
for your kind information company cannot prepare financial statements on cash company has to prepare financial statement on accrual basis only ah uh, proprietary can prepare financial statement on cash partnership firm can prepare financial statements on cash but company have no choice company should always prepare financial statements on accrual only this is the reason ki first fundamental accounting assumption is what if whenever you study financial statement of any person any organization assumption will be it is prepared on the basis of accrual otherwise if it is not prepared on accrual initially you should mention the fact ki this financial statements are prepared on cash company will not have the option to prepare financial statement on cash always accrual other enterprises will have the option company will have accrual only company will not have any option to prepare the financial statement on cash company to hamesha kis se banana padega accrual se banana padega clear next assumption suppose you are meeting with one person so what is your assumption suppose you are making the friendship with one person every day you are meeting with each other so today you meet so what is your assumption ki next day also will come or not kya ya sunjenge wo agle din mar jayenga bolkar hmm what is your assumption next day also will come will meet okay this is your assumption or not so accounting assumption is also same ki this company will survive in the next 12 months period also it means there is a possibility ki this organization will survive for next 12 months also that is called as going concern that is called as what going concern suppose in next 12 months per time if organization is not able to survive there is a possibility of bankrupt or insolvency then the fact has to be disclosed by the person who is preparing financial statement by ki foreseeable 12 months period organization is not able to survive if this is not mentioned means your underlying assumption is what ki next 12 months business will continue business will continue suppose if financial statement is provided to you nothing is mentioned so simply you should assume ki in next 12 months business will continue going concern means students will say very long period of time ya long long kuch bhi nahi hai yahan par going concern principle you understand in foundation na so going concern principle means what is your answer a business enterprise should survive for very long period of time aise hi bolte na aap ya kuch dusra samajh kya hai yahan par aap kya samjhe mere ko pata nahi aap boliye a business will survive for very long तो लॉन्ग पीरियड बोलते कितना समय यहां पे ट्वेल्व मंथ से डालना यहां पे हाउ मच यहां पे सौ दो सौ साल का नहीं है यहां पर ओनली ट्वेल्व मंथ्स नेक्स्ट ट्वेल्व मंथ्स इफ बिजनेस इज गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू गोइंग कंसर्न मेंटेन नेक्स्ट ट्वेल्व मंथ्स देर इज ए साइन ऑफ डिसकंटिन्यूएशन इंसॉल्वेंसी बैंक अपसी देन गोइंग कंसर्न इज नॉट मेट अंडरस्टैंड if going concern is maintained financial statements will be prepared differently if going concern is not maintained financial statements will be prepared in different way this is very important if going concern is maintained means business is likely to continue then there is a classification of assets liabilities as in assets non current assets investment current asset classification required liability is also shareholder fund long term is non current liability current liability classification required suppose if going concern is not maintained there is no need of any classification and similarly depreciation also if going concern is not maintained no need of depreciation because company will sell the asset depreciation is charged when asset is going to continue If asset is going to sold, there is no need of any depreciation. So examination, different types of questions can be tested. By because of which assumption depreciation is charged, because of which assumption 
assets will be classified liabilities will be classified and if going concern assumption is not fulfilled on balance sheet assets will be disclosed at net realizable value if going concern is maintained asset will be disclosed at cost or fair value cost or fair value because if going concern is not maintained ultimately what is your objective you have to sell ab dekhiye bhai mujhe business karna hi nahi hai to main asset kya karunga bechunga na main to balance sheet mein kaun si value par dikhaunga asset ko main nrv cost pe kaise dikhayenge net realizable value at what amount i can sell this asset that value i will show i will not show cost when cost will be shown when business is continued when business is not going to continue then ultimately i will sell the asset na so nrv is required what is required nrv required net realizable value clear so examination point of view sometime question can be directly coming from going concern area we will discuss in as1 don't worry next is consistency going concern understand any doubt queries मैं पहले ही बोला हूँ अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड बहुत ज़्यादा पढ़ूंगा मैं फिर अगर कुछ डायजेशन प्रॉब्लम रहा तो बोलो क्लियर बट ये काम आता फाइनल में सी वालों को अभी नहीं आया तो नहीं आया फाइनल में तो 100 परसेंट काम आता फिर भी कोई डॉट करिए तो बोलिए नेक्स्ट कंसिस्टेंसी कंसिस्टेंसी मीन्स वॉट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विल फॉलो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ अकाउंटिंग पॉलिसीज Accounting policies means ठीक है consistency actually fundamental accounting assumption you learned at foundation level ना और first time you are learning it was there in foundation also ना हाँ तो दो तो मैं समझा दिया हो गया ना what I explained accrual I explained going concern also explained वो oh, consistency consistency any student can explain already I given the hint also Means whatever knowledge you have, you can express. No need to fear. Consistency means previously what accounting policies organization has followed. In current period also, it has to follow the same. Clear? Suppose if they change, what will happen? generally user of financial statement will not able to understand the things per and proper way clear like a daily we are changing the timetable what will happen every day will wait for message same timetable continued means no need to communicate also regarding timetable only class is there or not that is important that's it time table will be same but if daily time table is change you have to check message similarly user of financial statement also disturbed if same type of accounting policies are not followed by the entity user of financial statement will not have the proper understandability of financial statement clear see one of the quantitative characteristics of financial statement is understandability also if this is lapse this is not there in the financial statement so ultimate purpose of financial statement will not accomplish that's why consistency is important but it does not mean ki don't change anything it does not mean ki don't change anything suppose a newly married person came to your house daily you are changing kitchen room she will confuse or not daily people are eating different things she will confuse or not the user of financial statements also same previous year financial statement is prepared in different way this year financial statement prepared in different way previous year different policy this year different policy so he will not have proper understanding this is the reason ki consistency required but it does not mean ki changes should not be taken into take place changes also we have to consider 
But when changes will be taken into consideration? When it is required by law. Very good. When it is required by law. Suppose if law already mentioned in Companies Act, one provision is made that you cannot use this method of depreciation. You have to change method of depreciation. Then you have to change. There is no option available. Suppose in Companies Act previously percentage method was used. Now Companies Act clarified that no percentage method is not possible now. You have to use life, useful life method. Depreciation should be calculated from useful life. So you have to change or not? Compulsory have to change. So when it is required by law or statute, and when changes are making the more meaningful disclosure, then you can make the changes. Suppose previously you are following straight line method of depreciation, but your production pattern is not uniform. Sometimes you are produce more goods, sometimes you are produce less goods, sometimes your usage is high, sometimes your usage is less. Then straight line method is not suitable, no? Then which method is best suitable? WDV method or units of production method. Units of production method. So you can use these methods. So previously you use straight line, now you are switching to units of production method. This is more correct, no? Because financial statement should be prepared on true and fair. Financial statement should be prepared on true and fair. If your usage is different, but your depreciation is same, so this is no true and fair. This is no true and fair, na? Suppose previously you use one lakh hours. This year you use fifty thousand hours only, but you are charging same depreciation, so it is true fair. That's why. You you can change here. You can change the method of depreciation. So when it is required by law, you can change. Or when changes are making more meaningful result, then you can make the changes. Otherwise, changes are not recommended. Changes are not suggested. So this is fundamental accounting assumption. This is what? So when you prepare the financial statements, first, these fundamental accounting assumptions have to be covered. It means financial statements be must uh, must be prepared on accrual basis. When user of financial statement is accessing towards financial statement, you should understand, you should assume key financial statement prepared on accrual. Second, you should assume key no changes has been taken place. Previously, what policies followed? This year also same policy followed. Third, business is likely to continue in future 12 months period also. These are the assumptions. These are the assumptions. अब तुम्हारा अंडरलाइंग एजम्पन क्या रहता है सी का एग्जाम लिखने गए तो पेपर इजी आता टफ आता इजी आता बोल के कहते तो फेल हो जाते फिर कभी भी इजी आता बोल कर नहीं जाना क्या आता बोल कर जाना टफ आता और दूसरा एजम्पन क्या रहता है मैं पास होऊंगा या फेल होऊंगा क्या सोच के जाते आप पास होऊंगा बोलकर जाना फेल होता हो तो फेल ही होते फिर आप वैसे यहां पे कुछ एजम्पन है फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट में कि वेन यू स्टडी दी फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट एनालाइज दी फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट दिज आर दी एजम्पन टू बी फॉलोड ओके आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू ऑल स्टूडेंट्स नो नेक्स्ट है क्वालिटेटिव कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट दिस इज ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन क्वालिटेटिव कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट मीन्स वेन फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट आर प्रिपेयर इट शुड बी बाई डिफॉल्ट covers this areas by default financial statement should cover this areas means these are compulsory features of financial statements means first uh, important point is understandability understandability means financial statement should be understandable to all ab all means generally anybody who is having the accounting sense anybody who is having the accounting sense or literate person clear he can understand easily suppose he want to check sales in balance sheet sales uh, sorry pnl statement sales available previous year data also available current year data also available he can check easily and he can compare clear suppose if they do not give the sales figures properly 
it is difficult for even for literate person also to trace out then it is understandable or no not understandable so first primarily qualitative characteristic is understandability means almost all every user of financial statement should understand the financial statements even if you check any financial statement that is understandable clear the kali tata still ka result aaya hai kali aaya tata still ka result previous quarter mein tata still ko 6600 crore ka loss tha 6600 crore loss is quarter mein usko jo hai 550 crores ka profit aaya तो प्रीवियसली लॉस से किस में आया उन्होंने तो इसलिए शेयर्स में थोड़ा बहुत इंक्रीज हो सकता है अब शेयर में क्या हो सकता है थोड़ा जंप हो सकता है एच बैंक प्रीवियसली रिजल्ट उसका अच्छा था इस बार खराब रिजल्ट आया तो सीधा आप सिक्सटीन फिफ्टी से फोर्टीन फिफ्टी पे आ गया उन्होंने पैनिक सेलिंग हो गया उसके अंदर क्यों परफॉर्मेंस सिर्फ एक क्वार्टर में खराब हो गया उसका फिर वापस बाउंस बैक होता वो बड़ी कंपनी है वापस से बाउंस बैक हो जाता है विराट कोहली भी जीरो पे कई बार उठवा है महेंद्र सिंह धोनी भी कई बार जीरो पे आउट हुआ है महेंद्र सिंह धोनी कई बार कई कप हार चुका है ऐसा थोड़ी ना कि हर कप महेंद्र सिंह धोनी जीता क्या तो ऐसे ही कुछ कंपनीज में कभी कभी कुछ फिगर्स खराब आते हैं तो कंपेरिजन शुड बी इजी तो इफ यू सी टाटा स्टील ये फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट इजिली यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड की प्रीवियस ईयर वॉट इज द नेट प्रॉफिट दिस ईयर वॉट इज द नेट प्रॉफिट प्रीवियस ईयर वॉट इज द सेल दिस ईयर वॉट इज द सेल्स इजिली मालूम पड़ जाता है देखते हैं आपको उसको बोलते हैं अंडरस्टैंडेबिलिटी अभी मैं दिखाता था लेकिन आपको तो टाइम नहीं है मेरे पास अब मैं उसको ऑन करना पाँच मिनट उसमें चले आते फिर फिर मैं इसको डाउनलोड करना स्टेटमेंट्स को आप घर पे जाके देख लो रेवेन्यू रहता है टाटा स्टील का पिछले साल था उसका रेवेन्यू सिक्सटी थाउजेंड इस बार हुआ है उसका सेवेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड तो सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड करोर इंक्रीज हुआ है और नेट प्रॉफिट में थ्री का इंक्रीमेंट हुआ है ईयर ऑन ईयर बेसिस पर रेवेन्यू में भी इंक्रीमेंट हुआ है एक्सिस बैंक का रिजल्ट खराब आया इस बार थोड़ा क्लियर तो इसलिए एक्सिस बैंक का शेयर भी माइनस में है कल भी माइनस में था आज भी माइनस में है समझ में आया बात तो शेयर होल्डर्स जो पैसे इन्वेस्ट करते हैं वो लोग रिजल्ट को देखकर भी कुछ लोग होल्ड करते कुछ लोग बेच देते तो कैसा है मालूम पड़ रहा शेयर होल्डर को फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट को समझ में आ रहा ना इसलिए तो बेचरा खरीद रहा हूं इसलिए अंडरस्टैंडेबल है वो क्लियर इजीली कंपैरिजन इज पॉसिबल अंडरस्टैंडेबिलिटी तो नेक्स्ट इज व्हाट रिलेवेंट सो फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट शुड प्रोवाइड रिलेवेंट इंफॉर्मेशन ओनली व्हाट इज नेसेसरी फॉर डिसीजन मेकिंग दैट ओनली इट शुड मैंशन अननेसेसरी स्टफ इज नॉट कवर्ड इन दैट ओके इस हॉल टिकट आता घर पर आपके तो आप क्या करते हैं बोलो हॉल टिकट में पहले क्या देखते हैं अपना रोल नंबर देखते हैं सेंटर देखते हैं एग्जाम कौन कौन से डेट पे वो देखते हैं उसके नीचे की इंस्ट्रक्शन कोई भी नहीं पड़ता हम अब जिसको काम धंधा कुछ भी नहीं है पढ़ना कुछ भी नहीं है उन्होंने क्या करता इंस्ट्रक्शन पढ़ता हूँ बराबर ना बाकी के लोग तो क्या देखते हैं सिर्फ रोल नंबर एग्जाम सेंटर डेट्स टाइमिंग्स एग्जाम की अब बाकी सब इंस्ट्रक्शन पढ़ते क्या हम्म अब इंस्ट्रक्शन पढ़ने के दस इंस्ट्रक्शन रहते हैं उसमें वो आपके लिए उतना ज्यादा मायने नहीं रखता ना इसलिए क्या करते हैं आप रिलेवेंट क्या है आपके लिए फोर एडम्स ओनली दस फोर एडम्स ओनली स्टूडेंट्स विल सी तो हियर ऑल्सो यूजफुल इंफॉर्मेशन ओनली रिलेवेंट इंफॉर्मेशन ओनली फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट शुड प्रोवाइड अननेसेसरी इंफॉर्मेशन इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड Clear like revenue how much, expenses how much, what is the assets, amounts year ending, beginning depreciation how much, similarly share capital previously how much now how much, clear what is earning per share, clear previously right now, this is important information. अब उसमें financial statement में नीचे थोड़ी ये लिए थोड़ी ना लिखेंगे उन्हों कि मुकेश शर्मा के बेटे की आज engagement हुई है. मुकेश अंबानी के बेटे ने आज मर्सिडीज बेंज नई गाड़ी खरीदी है ये मेंशन करता क्या उन्होंने आपके लिए काम का इन्फॉर्मेशन है क्या ये आप बोलेंगे उन्होंने मर्सिडीज बेंज खरीदा मुझे क्या करना है उससे मेरे को क्या फायदा है उससे फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट में रेवेन्यू बढ़ा तो आपको फायदा है क्यों यू आर ए इन्वेस्टर 
if company revenue increasing generally you will feel happy if company net profit increases you will feel happy okay shamane ke parivar mein koi naya sadasya ka janma ho to aapko kya karna hai usse to ye aapke kaam ka information hai kya isliye jo kaam ka information hai wahi dalte ho log aap bekar information likhte hi nahi wo log clear next materiality materiality means what Hmm. Any information which is significant for your decision, it is called as material. It is called as what? Material. Material means small amount, big amount, na rata hi hai. Any information which is significant for your decision making, if company does not disclose that, economic decision making of user of financial statement can be affected. Those items are called as material items. भाई कोई आइटम को वो लोग नहीं डिस्क्लोज करने के कारण या डिस्क्लोज करने के कारण उसका डिसीजन मेकिंग चेंज हो सकता है वो क्या बन जाएगा मेटेरियल आया समझ में तो मेटेरियल इंफॉर्मेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज ऑफ मेटेरियल इंफॉर्मेशन ओनली पीपल विल होल्ड दी शेयर्स और पीपल विल सेल दी शेयर्स दैट इज कॉल्ड एज वॉट मेटेरियलिटी क्लियर अब एग्जाम्पल के लिए जैसे कुछ एग्जाम्पल ले लेंगे तो टाटा केमिकल के शेयर में पैसे लगाए आप किस में लगाए टाटा केमिकल टाटा केमिकल नहीं टाटा पावर के बारे में बोलता हूं मैं चलो टाटा पावर सो रिसेंटली प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज स्टार्टेड वन न्यू प्रोजेक्ट सोलार प्रोजेक्ट Now Tata Power is generally very much interested in this project because they want to work with government. Then you are an investor in Tata Power. Now you will sell or hold the shares. Hold करते क्यों? If government is giving the generally projects to Tata Power, then Tata Power revenue will increase, profitability will increase. So your share price will also increase or not? So this fact has to be mentioned in financial statement. So we say material. It is what material. So any item which is material that should be affecting the economic decision making of user of financial statement that should be reflected in financial statement, either in balance sheet, P and L or in notes. Notes me mention karte jaata hai. Kya mention karte hain log? Notes. Kahan par mention karenge? नोट्स में नेक्स्ट इज रिलायबिलिटी रिलायबिलिटी मीन्स द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट विच इज प्रिपेयर बाय कंपनी शुड बी रिलायबल रिलायबल मीन्स ट्रस्ट ट्रस्ट वर्तीनेस बोलते देखो उसको क्या बोलते हैं ट्रस्ट वर्तीनेस भरोसेमंद क्या बोलते हैं उसको भरोसेमंद तो फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स भरोसेमंद होना जरूरी है नहीं है So on what basis it will be trusted? First, it will be complied by accounting standard. Then only it will be reliable. If accounting standards are not complied, it will be reliable. No. But apart from this, financial statement should cover other considerations also. So financial statements will be reliable if two considerations are covered. Two types of consideration are there in it. पहला कंसिडरेशन रहता है प्राइमरी दूसरा रहता है सेकेंडरी प्राइमरी कंसिडरेशन मीन्स फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट शुड बी प्रिपेयर ऑन ट्रू एंड फेयर ट्रू एंड फेयर सेकेंड कंसिडरेशन मीन्स जनरली दिस थ्री आइटम सब्सटेंस ओवर फॉर्म प्रूडेंस कंप्लीटनेस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन दिस वी विल कवर इन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड वन ऑल्सो अगेन it means when your financial statements will be reliable when financial statements will cover this aspects first it should be true and fair second this three aspects true and fair means when you comply the accounting standard by default you assume it is true and fair next while preparing financial statement you have to cover these aspects also substance over form prudence and completeness of the information 
so substance over form means what substance over form means what substance over form means uh, reality is more important than legality legality nahi chahiye apne ko kya chahiye reality chahiye for example you have taken one asset on lease one building you have taken on lease and that building you are using for hotel clear and you are paying the lease rent now from that building revenue is coming to landlord and revenue is coming to lessee also lessee means the person who is using the building okay so in accounting who will write lease on a set side of balance sheet suppose a ke paas ek building hai dhyan se suno example suppose a is having one building a has given this building to be on lease okay now b is using this building for hotel business now b is paying lease rent so a is landlord b is lessee right so lessee is using the building lessee is also generating revenue from the building or not and a lesser landlord is also earning income by way of rent or not now the question is whether b can mention this lease property in the balance sheet or not answer is yes answer is yes why answer is yes because legality not important reality reality is important asset is in whose control right now b's control who is producing more revenue from that building b so in accounting definition of asset is different accounting definition of asset is not based on ownership accounting definition of asset is based on revenue generation pattern and control pattern समझ में आया ना अब सपोज यू बर ओला में सपोज वन पार्ट टाइम जॉब कर रहे आप सपोज वन स्टूडेंट इज वेरी हार्ड वर्किंग स्टूडेंट इज डूइंग सी ए कोर्स ऑल्सो एंड इवनिंग टाइम में नो कार कैब चला रहा है वो पैसों के लिए तो ही परचेज दी मारुति स्विफ्ट कार ऑन ई एम आई राइट नाउ कार इज इन कंट्रोल ऑफ स्टूडेंट हु इज अर्निंग दी रेवेन्यू बैंक हु फाइनेंस डा और द स्टूडेंट हु इज ड्राइविंग द कार आ स्टूडेंट ओनली सो रेवेन्यू इज कमिंग टू स्टूडेंट्स एंड कंट्रोल इज ऑल्सो इन देंड्स ऑफ स्टूडेंट so student can disclose this as an asset substance is important then accounting which person is generating revenue in which person's control asset is there that person can show the assets in their books of accounts so this is called as substance over form so reality is important not legality legally to uska owner kon hai bank jo finance kar raha hai uno hai राइट नाउ रियलिटी में कौन ओनर है जो कार को ड्राइव कर रहा है क्लियर ये समझना पड़ेगा आपको सब्सटेंस ओवर फॉर्म तो कहां कहां पर आता सब्सटेंस ओवर फॉर्म व्हेन यू लर्न अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड 19 व्हेन यू लर्न हायर परचेस चैप्टर ओके व्हेन वन पर्सन इज सेलिंग द प्रॉपर्टी एक पर्सन प्रॉपर्टी बेच दिए वन मोर एग्जाम्पल ये आगे आएगा फिर आपको सुनो अच्छे से suppose a has one building he has made the agreement with b to sell the building he has taken some token money also advance money also but building is not transferred from a to b till balance sheet date till balance sheet date this balance sheet date के दिन बिल्डिंग ए के नाम पे ही है बट ए जो है बी से एडवांस ले चुका है ए जो है बी से एडवांस ले चुका है बिल्डिंग बेचने के लिए और बाकी का कंसिडरेशन बी उसको पे कर देगा तो ए से बी के नाम पे प्रॉपर्टी ट्रांसफर नहीं हुई अभी ओके 
सो वेन थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च बैलेंस शीट इज प्रिपेयर ए कैन शो बिल्डिंग इन बैलेंस शीट अट साइड और ही के नॉट डिस्कलोज बैलेंस बिल्डिंग ऑन अट साइड ई शुड नॉट डिस्कलोज द बिल्डिंग क्योंकि उसका बिल्डिंग अब बिग गया है लीगल में तो यही ओनर है अभी थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च बैलेंस शीट डेट बट प्रैक्टिकल सिचुएशन हू परचेज दिस भी अब फ्यूचर में किसको जाएंगे बिल्डिंग वो तो थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च पे ए ओनर है लीगली बट इन रियलिटी हुई ओनर तो लीगलिटी इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट इन अकाउंटिंग रियलिटी इंपॉर्टेंट अंडरस्टैंड को बोलते हैं सब्सटैंस ओवर फॉर्म दैट इज कॉल्ड एज वॉट सब्सटैंस ओवर फॉर्म क्लियर अब देखिए फाउंडेशन में जो पढ़ के आते हैं ना आप आप यही समझो कि हम कुछ भी नहीं पढ़ के आए तो ज्यादा अच्छा समझ में आएगा सब्जेक्ट आप अगर ओवर कॉन्फिडेंस में एबसेंट हो जाएंगे नहीं मेरे को तो ये सब आता मैं घर में बैठ के पढ़ लूंगा सोचेंगे तो लॉस आपका होता फिर बेस्ट क्या है कि वी डोंट नो एनीथिंग क्लास में पूरा जीरो से बैठो पूरा अच्छा समझ में आएगा आपको क्लियर क्योंकि एक पॉइंट भी एग्जाम में अगर जो है गलत लिख दिया आप तो पहले सी का एग्जाम है वो नो मार्क्स बहुत काट कुट कर देता है वो मार्क्स बढ़ा कर देने का तो सोचने में अपन सी का एग्जाम में दस मार्क का क्वेश्चन लिखे आप तो अपन यही समझना कि अपने उसमें दस में से कमी आएंगे दस के दस मुश्किल से आते हैं पूरा सही लिखे तो भी दस के दस नहीं देते वो लोग नौ ही देते वहां पर बहुत कम सिचुएशन में टेन आउट ऑफ टेन आते हैं आपको नेक्स्ट इज प्रूडेंस प्रूडेंस मीन्स वॉट सीए के एग्जाम को जा रहे हैं आप क्या सोचते हैं आप कि मैं पास हो जाऊंगा या फेल हो जाऊंगा पास हो जाऊंगा अगर पेपर अच्छा लिखूंगा तो खाली एक सोच के गए तो पास हो जाते क्या हुँ? या एग्जाम में परफॉर्म भी करना पड़ता है परफॉर्म भी तो करना पड़ेगा ना पर अंडरलाइंग एग्जामेशन क्या रहता अपना कहीं ना कहीं दिल में क्या रहता डर पेपर थोड़ा भी डिफरेंट आया तो मैं फेल भी हो सकता हूं तो बिफोर Going to the exam hall, always what you think कि this is a challenging examination, सी एस सी एम एग्जामिनेशन यू हैव टू स्टडी हार्ड पेपर कैन बी समटाइम सिंपल ऑल्सो समटाइम डिफिकल्ट साइड ऑल्सो सो यू हैव टू प्रिपेयर इन परफेक्टली डोंट टेक एनी रिस्क तो ये आपका आजमशन है नहीं है उसको क्या बोलते हैं पहले नेगेटिव सोचो बाद में पॉजिटिव सोचो तो प्रोडेंस उसको ही बोलते हैं कंजर्वेटिज्म स मीन्स वॉट कंजर्वेटिज्म कंजर्वेटिव रहना आप क्या रहना हमेशा कंजर्वेटिव रहना तो एंटिसिपेट ऑल पॉसिबल लॉसेस बट डू नॉट एंटिसिपेट एनी प्रॉफिट अंटिल अदरवाइड इज रियलाइज लाइक प्रोविजन फॉर बैड डेट्स इज एग्जाम्पल ऑफ प्रूडेंस इज एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वॉट प्रूडेंस वाई देर इज ए प्रोविजन रिक्वाइर्ड ऑन डेटर इन फ्यूचर डेटॉल्स डेटार्स कैन डिफॉल्ट ना भाई अभी तो डिफॉल्ट नहीं करवाना फ्यूचर में कर सकता तो इन फ्यूचर यू कैन मेक द डिफॉल्ट इन फ्यूचर प्रॉफिट कैन बी डिक्लाइंड तो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट यू आर मेकिंग प्रोविजन ना तो दैट इज वॉट प्रूडेंस प्रूडेंस का मतलब क्या है कंजर्वेटिज्म 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 मीन्स वॉट इन फ्यूचर Some negative incident can take place, and your profit is, profits can decline. So because of that, provision is required on data. Provision is required on data. Clear? But when you make the provision, generally, without following anything, you will make the provision. Ah, huh? or here also some. फ्रेमवर्क इज रिक्वायर्ड फ्रेमवर्क रिक्वायर्ड प्रोफेशनल जजमेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड द पर्सन हु मेक द प्रोविजन ना दोज पीपल विल हैव द प्रोफेशनल जजमेंट बिफोर मेकिंग द प्रोविजन दे विल चेक विच डेटार इज गुड विच डेटार इज डाउटफुल तो अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट दे विल मेक द प्रोविजन अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट दे विल मेक द प्रोविजन अब जैसे सौ परसेंट में से सपोज वन लाख डेटा रहे पूरा वन लाख पे कर देते और फाइव टेन परसेंट ओनली फाइव टेन परसेंट बिकॉज नाइन्टी परसेंट डेटार्स विल बी अज्यूम्ड एज वॉट गुड फाइव टेन परसेंट डेटार्स ओनली अज्यूम्ड एज वॉट डॉटफुल ऑन दोज ओनली प्रोविजन इज मेड तो प्रोफेशनल जजमेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड 
वट इज रिक्वायर्ड प्रोफेशनल जजमेंट तो प्रोविजन का मतलब क्या है प्रोविजन मीन्स वॉट देखिए प्रोविजन फॉर डॉटफुल डेट्स में समझा दिया क्या है अब प्रोविजन का मतलब बोलो क्या है प्रोविजन इज ए लाइबिलिटी ये डेटार का जो प्रोविजन है ना ये प्रोविजन अलग है और अकाउंटिंग में जो प्रोविजन का डेफिनेशन है वो अलग है डिटार प्रोविजन इज नॉट ए लाइबिलिटी डिटार प्रोविजन इज नॉट ए लाइबिलिटी बट इन अकाउंटिंग प्रोविजन वर्ड इज हैविंग डिफरेंट मीनिंग लाइक प्रोविजन फॉर टैक्स प्रोविजन फॉर ग्रेचुटी प्रोविजन फॉर रिटायरमेंट बेनिफिट से पढ़ते ना आप दैट प्रोविजन इज डिफरेंट डिटार प्रोविजन इज डिफरेंट Retire provision is not a liability. It is only a charge against profits. It is only a charge against profits. Okay, but actually meaning of provision is different. So AS twenty nine में आता है कहाँ पर आता है वो? AS twenty nine provision contingent asset contingent liability में आता है वो. वहाँ पढ़ लेंगे डिटेल में आप. So provision का definition है provision is a liability which is measured by using substantial degree of estimation. Which is measured by using substantial degree of estimation. Estimation lagta hai uspe. Estimation means what? Which is not certain. On that we'll estimate how much is possible, how much is not possible. Like five percent required, ten percent required, fifteen required. The estimation required. So provision for doubtful debts will be decided by whom? Management. Because this is a estimation. This is what the so management will decide. This. The CAVA decide not does. Who decide? Does it? Management. Mukesh Ambani said, "Brother, two percent. Do CAVA has to do two percent. Clear? These are all management's work. Estimation. Useful life of the asset is also decided by whom? Management. So provision for doubtful debts is the example of prudence. Or an example. What is it? Inventory valuation. Next is what? Inventory valuation. Inventory should be valued at cost. If cost is generally more, net realizable value is less, then inventory is valued at what? NRV. Clear? Suppose if NRV is more, cost is less, you are valuing the inventory at NRV. What will happen? <laughs> Very good. Unrealized profit comes. Look, the net realizable value is 200 rupees. Cost is 180 rupees. Net realizable value means selling price. Net of expenses. Net of expenses. So 200 rupees net realizable value. 180 rupees cost. Suppose 1000 units of inventory is there. So if you value according to 200, so in your calculation. On every unit, 20 rupees profit will come or not? 200 selling price is its. 180 cost is. So 220 rupees profit is its. 200 minus 180. How much profit? 20. So on every unit, 20 rupees profit will come in books of accounts or not? So this profit you realized, ah? So this is unrealized profit. So to eliminate unrealized profit, prudence required. Prudence? Why do you need? भाई तुम अकाउंटेंट है कंपनी के कॉस्ट एनआरवी पे करना है वैल्यूएशन तो आप किस पे करेंगे विच एवर लोअर विच एवर लोअर सपोज इफ यू डू नॉट फॉलो दिस व्हाट विल हैपन अनरियलाइज प्रॉफिट विल कम इन बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स टू एलिमिनेट अनरियलाइज प्रॉफिट प्रूडेंस रिक्वायर्ड अंडरस्टैंड प्रूडेंस क्यों चाहिए बुक्स में अनरियलाइज प्रॉफिट नहीं आना इसलिए बनाए उसको क्लियर आ रहा है समझ में नेक्स्ट है कंप्लीटनेस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन कंप्लीटनेस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन मींस न्यूज चैनल के जैसा हेडिंग नहीं आना कंप्लीट है ना वो न्यूज चैनल में क्या हेडिंग डालता है ईरान ने पाकिस्तान पर डैश अब आप परेशान युद्ध हो गया या होने वाला है जब एडवर्टाइजमेंट डाल देता उन्हें क्या डाल देता 
एडवर्टाइजमेंट फिर वो पूरे एडवर्टाइजमेंट होने के बाद न्यूज बोलता हूं ईरान ने पाकिस्तान पर बम डालने के लिए सोचा आप बोलते हैं बेकार न्यूज खाऊंगा बंद करो इसको आप क्या सोच रहे हैं कहीं ईरान पाकिस्तान पे बम डाल देगा तो स्टॉक मार्केट तो गिर नहीं जाएगा कहीं आप ईरान में पाकिस्तान में इंटरेस्टेड नहीं है आप आप शेयर मार्केट में इंटरेस्टेड है क्यों वार हुआ तो शेयर मार्केट गिरता ना क्या गिरता शेयर मार्केट गिरता वार हुआ तो क्यों इसका असर बाकी के कंट्रीज पर भी रहता है फिर वार स्टार्ट होगा तो लोग पूरा किसमें बिजी रहेंगे उसमें बिजी रहेंगे शेयर मार्केट में थोड़ी बिजी रहेंगे तो आप किसमें इंटरेस्टेड है शेयर मार्केट में आपको ईरान पाकिस्तान से कुछ मतलब नहीं है लेकिन वो अब चैनल में क्या कर रहा हूं ना बराबर बता रहा है अब टीस कर रहा है आपको तो इसलिए क्या है इंफॉर्मेशन हमेशा क्या होना कंप्लीट होना इनकम्प्लीट इंफॉर्मेशन से क्या होता है आपको गलत डिसीशन होता है क्या होता है गलत डिसीशन होता है इसलिए कंप्लीटनेस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन इज नेसेसरी वेन कंपनी सो मच ऑफ स्टफ इज अवेलेबल तो What is necessary stuff that should be mentioned completely? What is reliable? What is relevant? That information should be provided completely, जो आपके decision making पर affect कर सकता Clear? Because of that, you can hold the or you can sell the shares, or you can continue with the company, or you can choose another company also. Clear? लास्ट एंड फाइनली कंपेरेबिलिटी कंपेरेबिलिटी मीन्स वन कंपनी विथ अनदर कंपनी इंट्रा फॉर्म कंपेरिजन इंटर फॉर्म कंपेरिजन बोथ आर इंपॉर्टेंट इंट्रा फॉर्म कंपेरिजन मीन्स कंपनी विथ कंपनी लाइक टाटा इज स्टिल प्रीवियस क्वार्टर रिजल्ट दिस क्वार्टर रिजल्ट टाटा इज स्टिल प्रीवियस ईयर रिजल्ट दिस ईयर रिजल्ट बोलते इंट्रा टाटा इज स्टिल का प्रीवियस परफॉर्मेंस करंट परफॉर्मेंस यू आर कंपेरिंग दिस इज इंट्रा इंटर मीन्स यू आर कंपेरिंग टाटा स्टिल विथ जी एस डब्ल्यू स्टिल क्लियर बहुत आर बिग मार्केट प्लेयर्स जे एस डब्ल्यू स्टील का भी मार्केट शेयर बहुत हाई है स्टील में टाटा स्टील का भी बहुत शेयर हाई है मार्केट शेयर सो यू आर कंपेरिंग बोथ राइट दिस इज इंटर फॉर्म कंपेरिजन नेक्स्ट इज सपोज यू आर इन्वेस्ट यू इन्वेस्टेड इन्फोसिस यू आर कंपेरिंग टी सी एस इन्फोसिस टी सी एस इन्फोसिस बिकॉज टी सी एस इज ऑल्सो रेगुलरली जनरली टेकिंग द various orders from uk us different different parts of the world tcs is also having global business so both are in it sector only so you are comparing both companies so this is called a inter firm comparison okay so comparison ke liye bhi acha rehta hai kyunki kisi company ka performance badh raha hai kisi ka kam ho raha hai to badhne wale mein paise lagayenge aap iska degree zara hat jayenge usse aap क्लियर अब जैसे एच डी बैंक है परफॉर्मेंस डिक्रीज हो रहा आईसीआईसी बैंक का परफॉर्मेंस बढ़ रहा तो आप क्या करेंगे एच डी बैंक के बेच देंगे शेयर आईसीआईसी में लगाएंगे पैसा आप क्या आईसीआईसी का रिजल्ट अच्छा है इस बार एच डी का रिजल्ट खराब आया इस बार आपको दिख रहा है कि एच डी आगे भी खराब आएगा रिजल्ट तो क्या करेंगे फिर आप बेचेंगे शेयर एच डी से बाहर आएंगे आईसीआईसी में लगाएंगे आप तो कंपेरिजन करना बोलते हैं उसको क्या बोलते हैं कंपेरिजन सो इंटर फ्रॉम कंपेरिजन इंट्रा फ्रॉम कंपेरिजन ओके तो इंट्रा फॉर्म कंपेरिजन में उसी कंपनी का प्रीवियस क्वार्टर और प्रीवियस ईयर से कंपेरिजन करना इंटर मीन्स इट इज कंपेयर विथ अदर कंपनी क्लियर है यहां तक पूरा समझ में आ गया अच्छे से कोई डॉट क्वेरी है अब नेक्स्ट क्लास आई विल एक्सप्लेन वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ अ सेट लाइबिलिटी इक्विटी ओके एक्सपेंसेस इनकम क्लियर आप बोलेंगे मेरे को तो सब असेट मालूम है आप क्या पढ़ाने वाले इसमें नया बोल के बोलेंगे आप मालूम है तो बहुत अच्छा है भाई नहीं मालूम है सुन लो क्लियर आफ्टर दिस आपको अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड अच्छा समझ में आएगा ये बिना पढ़े अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड में जंप करे समझो तो शेयर मार्केट में बिना लालच के पैसे लगाए तो कैसी होती हालत पैसा हो जाता है फिर 